team's main goal really to, when we first started off was just as, to stay with this core group of mates. Um, when we first started we were all just a group of mates that loved playing together. Um, and our I mean, key goal is to play and win nationals. If we were to win, it would mean everything. Eight years now, the same goal every year, to try and win. And we haven't managed to do it. To do it with my friends, this team would mean everything for me. I'm traveling the globe to play with amazing ultimate teams, explore diverse cities, and compete for championships at the world's best tournaments. This is Ultimate Globetrotter. After our time in New Zealand, we head to Melbourne, Australia to join the Heads of State. Hello and welcome to Ultimate Globetrotter. I'm Elliot Trotter. We're here in Australia, or as the locals say, Australia, for BCI, the Brisbane Canberra Invitational in Brisbane, where Melbourne's Heads of State are preparing for the national championships later this month. Okay, so the Brisbane Canberra Invitational is a uh, frisbee event that alternates between Brisbane and Canberra. It's a really good opportunity, it's the last opportunity before nationals to get a really strong hit out um, with your full team and to take on the best in Australia. For me, BCI was an opportunity to get to know the heads of state better on the field and learn a bit about my new teammates. If I had to define Heads of State in a few sentences, I would say that we are a young, aggressive bunch of arrogant dickheads. I think the key word was loud. They, they, they wanted to turn up to tournaments and you hear them from three fields away doing their warm-up lap. A lot of noise. We were pretty arrogant, pretty loud, pretty rude. The club started as a group of junior players that just didn't want to join the local men's team. We'd rock up in our first tournament. I think we all dyed our hair peroxide blonde. For a long time they were sort of seen as like a young rowdy bunch and we'd run around screaming, pretty much approaching every game as a, a huge energy ball. Top teams were able to beat us but it still annoyed them. I think you'll find a lot of players in, in the Ultimate community don't like playing against Hoss but they love playing for us um, and that's something that I think the club really prides itself on. We hang out outside of uh, Ultimate all the time, we live together. They're just a, a group of mates and just play frisbee together, more so than a frisbee players that are mates. We have a good time with each other, on and off the field, in more than one way. <laughs> Quarter Hoss's kind of philosophy and, and culture is that no one takes themselves too seriously. The culture we've created is one that creates loyalty. A bunch of mates who want to play top level ultimate. As far as metrics of success, Nationals is the only one we haven't ticked off yet. We've fallen short in, in a couple of semi-finals now. I think one of the things that's really stood in our way trying to win a national title is probably inexperience. I mean, we've never played in a national final and so, you know, just getting there winning that semi-final would be a big achievement for us. Despite two third place finishes since 2006, a team from Sydney seems to be the biggest challenge standing in Haas's way of a national championship. Our biggest challenge this year is likely to come from New South Wales in the form of Colony. Colony are, are a long established team, a team based out of Sydney. There are two teams that they split, both those teams are, are, are even strength. They've been one, in two, one and two in the final for the last two years at least. So yeah, I think everyone's a bit sick of seeing them in the final against each other. There's this, there's this perception of it'll just be Colony Colony every year because they're that good. But then when you, when you watch them play from afar, you go, well, you know, that, it does bleed and you can kill it. So uh, that's a frustration when you go, Jesus, we let that one get away. It's everything for us, I think. Uh, we want to win, we want to beat them, we want to be the best team in Australia. Beating those guys is what it's about. Having gone through what we have, 
and being able to say, right, this is what we're going to come up against. We know what we're in for this time. I think we're the best position we've ever been to, uh, to beat them. Oss had a strong performance at BCI, finishing fourth after losing to three teams, a veteran Masters team called Fat Chili and both of Sydney's Colony. Regardless of BCI's results, as we return to Melbourne, I'm encouraged by Haas's chances at Aussie Nats, and even more thrilled to be part of the team. <laughs> Melbourne itself is a beautiful modern city, composed of numerous neighborhoods that each have their own distinct vibe. Melbourne has a lively nightlife, great beaches, and many places to explore. I feel we uh, attained our objectives through BCI. I think that was a good reality check for them to go, okay, maybe, maybe we still have a bit of work to do. Our goal as a team would be to win national. Our goal as a club is to grow into a respected brand when we started, we only had about nine of us, I think, to start off with. And then we eventually grew and grew into a much bigger squad where we got a lot of the young university players from the Melbourne and Ballarat and Geelong areas to come to the team. Um, and we've slowly grown into a, into a club now that's now got three teams um, that compete throughout the men's season. You know, we play our nationals in April, uh, which means we're training from anywhere from November onwards. So we do a lot of running, a lot of uh, exhausting drills in our training sessions. Trying to get the most out of players when they're tired. And that's three trainings a week, so it can get quite, um, quite intense. And Haas coach Simon Talbot makes sure of it. Talbot coaches the three heads of state teams, my team, Burgundy, White, and Academy. His sporting past has influenced more physicality at trainings, as well as a high value placed on club jerseys. My sporting background um, in Australian rules has always just been about the team is above everything else. Players are only allowed to wear the year's jerseys during games and may only wear Haas gear during practice. Sort of like a little bit of a method element that when you, put, you finally put the jersey on, it's like this, this means I'm ready to go. This means I'm ready to give my all. Spending time with Haas is like being in college again. In addition to a passion for their team, players like Tim Wise are always looking for a laugh. I work full time as an accountant, but ultimate, I guess, is my main hobby or interest sport. Yeah, my life really. In high school, year 12, uh, Seb Barr, his older brother, played at uni and sort of brought the game to us in high school. And we pretty much threw every day at lunchtime. Um, started playing in the league, and then I played university, and then heads of state started. And I was lucky enough to be one of the players who started with it. You know, vast majority of the, of the playing group have been there since the start. So this is, our, I think, our eighth year now. To have that kind of retention really protects your culture. Graceland is the name of my adopted homestay. Here, there are always jokes to be made at each other's expense, and always a game of Aussie Rules football, or footy, on the telly. What are you boys watching? Football! <laughs> what are you doing in the mat, mate? Hey? So this is pink Himalayan sea salt. Very good for you. Hey, it's not good for you, it's crap. It's very good. Proven benefits. Look it up on the internet. To Haas and many living in Melbourne, footy is an important part of the Melbourne experience. With nine teams in Melbourne alone, there's always a rivalry to discuss. We're at the Etihad Stadium in Melbourne. Uh, we're watching an AFL game with Essen Bombers playing St Kilda Saints, and it's going to be a really good game, and the Bombers are going to win. And I hope they do, because I've been decked out in Bombers gear, as you can see. School predictions. So I have supporter now. I am, I'm a member. I'm a member supporter. Is to kick the ball 
through the two middle goalposts for six points. If you get it through the outside ones, you get one point. If you pass the ball around by kicking it or hand passing it, you can go forwards, backwards, wherever. If the ball's kicked and then a player marks it, then they're not allowed to be tackled. So they can hold on to the ball, go back and kick it again. If they hand pass it, it's live. They're allowed to be tackled. So it's 32-32 at halftime, all tied up. The game's been, I guess, pretty ugly. Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I, I know, but... It's been pretty ugly. Tim is, is assuring me that it's been a pretty ugly game. So the first game as a Bombers supporter did not go well. It ends in a loss. Why is it? Why, why did we lose this game? Well, we were shit tonight. They weren't there mentally. They weren't there physically. Well, it's a bummer for the Bombers, but we uh, we've got a long season ahead, so we'll hopefully pull through. All in all, an awesome time here watching some footy. Ultimate Globe Trotter. Though in many ways Melbourne is a sports-centric city, there's plenty of natural beauty in Victoria. Like at Wilson's Promontory, where I was privileged to join some of the team on a camping trip. Seb and Joshi also took me on a trip down the Great Ocean Road to learn how to surf and sample some authentic Aussie cuisine. We're gonna go check out some dinosaurs and koalas that have wings. Koala is a friendly little animal that just sort of sits in a tree eating eucalyptus leaves. It spends pretty much its whole day eating leaves because it's the energy you get from one eucalyptus leaf is so small that it has to eat just hundreds of them. Wow, look at that. It's majestic. Those rocks are the remnants of the cliff that have been eroded. Their limestone have been eroding over like a long time. <laughs> Though the weather wasn't the best, I managed to get up on a board after much coaching and attempts. It was a crowning moment that I won't soon forget. We are about to dine and eat a traditional Australian lunch, which is going to include a meat pie, beef, chunky beef, as well as a Big M chocolate milk, which is apparently only made in Victoria. I'm only going to find this here. Can't forget this awesome ketchup sauce. distributing device sauce. sauce, tomato sauce, excuse me. Are you doing it right? Other way? Yeah, I like. Oh, shit. All right, check that out. Check that out. Delicious. I think I just became about like probably 1% milk, 1% more Australian. <laughs> After spending much time in Melbourne and with the team, Haas had reached their last practice before the national championships. So this was the last practice of our season. The conditions didn't agree with us too much and that was perfect. It, uh, it rained sideways for a bit today and that was really good for the guys to push through, not have all the things go their way, have frustrating points where you know the cuts dry up or throws don't come out right. Just just errors you're going to have in, in really horrible weather. Um, and it really steeled the guys. It, it really, you know, you could feel that there was still a lot of concentration. There was a lot of uh, positivity. 
as well, um, because even though those things were happening, it's so easy for a, a team to go, you know get narky at each other or get frustrated, but there was still a lot of positivity and energy being generated from those tempo players. I'm feeling really relaxed going into nationals. I'm feeling really confident that we've stuck to our processes and achieved what we set out to achieve to be in the position we're in. We've hit the trainings that we've wanted to hit. We've uh, kept to the training programs and the fitness programs that we said we would. Um, so we've given ourselves every chance. So take care of everything you need to take care of, so you haven't got shit on your mind at Nationals, yeah? If you want to be getting up there Wednesday night, all fresh, relaxed, ready to go. So, <laughs> final training of the season. Thanks for your efforts all season, fellas. Thanks, I'll just say it on three. One, two, three! Heads up, three! The atmosphere at Australian Nationals is really good. We all rocked up, we are pretty up and about, the team were all talking. We're feeling good, we're pretty excited, and we're looking forward to playing. Yeah. Uh, so, that being said, we're going to get out there, hit up this first game. Let's just, let's just smack these cunts ended early, yeah? With much enthusiasm, Haas makes quick work of the first two teams we face. the offensive again, trying to seal the game. We defeat Magnum from Sydney, 15-5, and Outbreak from Adelaide, 15-7. Solid victory, just what we needed, so pretty happy with it. Our first challenge comes in the form of Perth's Sublime, which boasts big grabs and big throws. Yeah, we, we only face these guys once a year. We get along with them great off the field, but on the field they always want to beat us. They really came out hard. They really threw everything they had at us. Go up the line hard, one out from the stack. We've got all that time. Trust in those systems. They work. Okay, you've got plenty of time out there. Just find the open air. Morning light is coming. It turns out it really was the game of the day. It was pretty much neck and neck the whole time. Some amazing D from, from Maka and uh, Jake as well, just getting big up in the air. Uh, and we managed it to scrap it together and finish the day 3-0. So tomorrow we've got two games uh, in power pools, including one showcase game. and. Uh, no, we don't know what to expect exactly. We know we're going to have some tough competition, tougher than today. So we're really going to need to step it up. And yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was just afraid you were going to splash water on me. Day two opened with a power pool matchup against Colony Plunder, an opportunity for Haas to show what they were made of. Whatever they bring, we're just going to go harder. We're going to go higher. We're going to go faster. We're going to be stronger.
like fucking do it. But you know what it also feels like? It's yeah. better than that team. Yeah. 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 We want to win the fucking tournament. Go home as national champions, yeah? yeah. One more step. Well done. Yeah. So let's just let's just enjoy this, fellas. Yep. Yeah, boys. Yeah, boys. Right. Losing the blood flow. We're the boys. Hoss <laughs> 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 on three. One, two, three. Hoss! We're yeah. the boys. This set up Hoss for a showcase game against Fishwick, a red hot team out of Canberra that had beaten the same colony team earlier in the tournament. As the sun set on a poorly lit field, Haas felt comfortable in their ability to defeat Fishwick, but the game ended up testing both teams' resolve. The boys love playing in front of a crowd. They love a bit of, uh, a bit of an audience, and um, Fishwick do too. They really, they were going to get up for the big occasion. Oh, line on. We've got Joshy, Tim Wise, Mars, Andrew Malone. Now puts a flick up to the side. Joshy and he then he jacks a big one. He's got Wise. He's going deep for him. He's got the goal just as easy the other way. Haas levels the score. 2 all. John Holmes to AJ, and that means it's up and going, and AJ's gonna get there. And another huck for score. That makes it 3-2, Fishwick dictating the pace in a game that's so far trading. He's got it, and a big one goes up top is there. There's a defender at 10 towards the sideline. Oh, big bid! Fishwick, gainer up the sideline, now shoots for goal. He's got... He's got the goal, that's a break. Now this where it all counts. And Topper shoots on the inside, out back to Sebo. Excellent ball, onto that far sideline every time. Through the middle again, tons of space. And here it is, there's two on one. Oh, and Jono just can't get it. Yeah. Takes a bit of a travel and a huge shot. It looks like it's too far, but look you wise. Oh, what that was an unbelievable bid. Beautiful low pass, and that is the half for Fishwick. It's an excellent break play, 8 6. We'll get it done, we'll get it done. The boys are coming through. And now it's jacked. Knocked the heck at the back of the end zone by Tafa. Oh, but there's a foul on the play. The crowd does not like it. Streaking defenders, and I don't know what is going on with that. Whoa! Mac with a massive grab in between some tall company there. Back on the sideline. Oh, and a great run for the D by Charlie. Read that one in the sky. Now in the final stretches of the game, Haas faced two breaks in order to win. He looks to jag and he does. Jack and big back in, he's got the fastest man in ultimate red and Ashcroft. Gets himself a goal. It's all tied up. We're ready for universe the universe point next. What do you think? Well, this is how I had to end, really. It's been such a close game. Winning would mean an easy path to the final. Losing could put Haas up against just about anyone. One last point as Fishwick heads up on us. Nice little pass there to Jono, putting it in safe hands. There's a lot of pressure on the dub. Nice around pass. And that is an unbelievable day by Graf. Legend. Graf jumps into the lane for the D. AJ seems down. Not sure if there's going to be a call on this. Uh, but it's not. It's going to be in the hands of Fishwick. And, uh, you know, great play. Jono Holmes working hard up the line there. Oh, a lot of pressure on that catch. But Jono gets it and shoots an absolute zinger. That's the game. Fishwick are the winners. Haas had lost their first game on the weekend by one point, setting up a quarterfinal against an unknown opponent. We lifted in that second half to where we need to be to win a national championship. We weren't there in the first half. So tomorrow, come out ready to play that defensive intensity that we know we can play and come over the top of teams that we know we will. That's as close as it gets in Alti. So well done, boys. Be proud of a great day. And that's a tough day. And we got finals starting tomorrow morning. Thank you. Ultimate Globe Trotter. Quarterfinals. Haas took the field confident in the team they had become over the past two days but our quarterfinal opponent would put that confidence into question. Despite entering the tournament as the top seed, Colony Pillage had suffered unexpected losses, placing them in against heads of state in the quarterfinal. 
Haas had to be on their game. Coming out this morning, I felt that there was a bit of nerves throughout the team. You know, it's that, that old rivalry against Colony and we felt like the boys were a bit nervous coming out knowing that we had to do it again and play them in another tough game. And then the first point or two didn't go to plan. I think we turned it over, it was a long point. We got the nerves up a bit instead of taking the pressure off. So we were a bit hesitant with our cuts, a little bit hesitant with our throws. We had the belief that we could come back and we know we'd been on runs against that team in the past and we knew we could come back. The game was a blur. Colony went up a couple breaks early, and victory slowly crept away. Colony Pillage eliminates Heads of State, 13-8. The feeling after the game was, was just pure frustration and disappointment that we'd, we'd let it slip again. Haas was now bumped to the fifth place bracket and would have to watch the semis and finals play out from the sideline. But it was inspiring to see the team quickly regroup. Despite having lost their chance at gold, the jokes and smiles soon returned. At the end of the day, what seemed to matter most to this team was the opportunity to play with their mates. The theme of the season has always been finish strong. Yeah? That's what we're going to do. Rest of today and tomorrow, we're going to finish strong. Haas would go on to compete against Crosstown rivals Fat Chili and would compete with a vengeance winning the game comfortably. The final fifth place matchup put Haas against our old friends from Wellington, the Victoria Wildcats. Despite a close game, Haas was unwilling to let go of their team pride and defeated the Wildcats to claim fifth place, having fallen just a couple victories short of club history. We won every game but two and the two games we didn't win for the two teams in the final. Now that belief that we'll have going into next year, knowing that we can push teams and we'll be a year stronger and a year faster and a year better next year, I think will be really good for the team. They're going to hurt from this weekend. I think they're going to take that into next year to feel themselves. We're not perfect, we haven't got the wins, but we've got the right things in, in place. And, and as long as that culture stays, then the other stuff will come. We're already pushing. I think world clubs will help develop a few more players and then next year we'll have another crack at it. We're not going to give up until we win nationals. <laughs> and that concludes our time here in Australia. We're here at the Harbour Bridge in Sydney, which is a lovely place to end the first leg of our journey. Though my travels are over for now, I am grateful for the many friends and memories I have made on my trip. We trained hard with the Dragons and witnessed the natural beauty of Barakai. We learned the heartbreak of defeat as we competed with Auckland's Maggot and found true bonds of friendship battling with Melbourne's heads of state. Thanks for watching Ultimate Globetrotter. We'll catch you next time. Why did Fiona fall off the swing? I don't know why Fiona fell off the swing. But she had no arms. Bank sent me a letter the other day, so I had an outstanding account with them. I thought, see, that's great. Uh, Simon pulled us all in together pretty early and kind of got us focused on the next game. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hey mate, how are you? The boys! <laughs>